in this video, we're going to talk about subject verb agreement. Whenever you write a sentence, the subject and the verb must agree. So if you have a singular subject, your verb also needs to be singular. If you have a plural subject, your verb must also be plural. These sheets should be in your interactive notebook. If they are not, you can get some from me and, and uh, just use this video to help you fill them out. Otherwise, you can just use this video alone and just pause it, rewind it as often as you need to, to help you complete the homework assignment and prepare for the, the test. First thing uh, we want to start with is we're going to talk about how to create a plural verb and how to create singular verbs. So plural verbs. If you want to create a plural verb, we need to not or do not add an S to the verb. And this can seem pretty confusing if you really think about it, because if I say truck, truck is a noun, and this is actually singular. If I have trucks, still a noun, but this time it's plural. So notice how nouns we do add an S to to make it plural. Verbs are just the opposite. So verbs are just the opposite of nouns. So if I say they walk to the store, notice how walk is our verb. It follows our rule because there's no S on it. And the reason walk is plural because our subject is plural. We have the subject is the pronoun they. It's more than one person. The good thing about these rules is they just really come naturally to most of us. So most of us wouldn't say they walked to the store. It just doesn't sound correct. So this is one of these times we can just kind of go by if it sounds right. Remember, linking verbs are verbs that you can put an equal sign in for, and they describe a condition or state of being. Uh, there are plural and singular linking verbs. There's a, a lot of them. We're just going to talk about three. So the plural linking verb, verb is have, were, seen, am, are. Are would be another one. Okay, all those are plural. So if I say my teacher and his family are going on vacation, notice this is actually helping going. But notice how this is plural. Okay, this follows a rule because our subject is plural. We have two people here. We have teacher and his family. So we need a plural verb. Let's talk about singular verbs. So singular verbs are rules just the opposite. So if you have a singular verb, you need to add an S. So with this sentence, this is the same as our plural sentence, except we have he walks to the store. We have our singular verb. Notice how it has our S. Notice the reason it's singular, because we have one person, he. And we need a verb. Just like there are plural linking verbs, there are also plural or singular linking verbs. So have is a plural linking verb. Has is a singular linking verb. Were is a plural linking verb, was is a singular linking verb, seems kind of follows a rule with the S. And then if we have R as our plural, is would be our singular linking verb. So for an example, if everyone is hungry, this is our singular linking verb. The reason it is singular is because our subject is singular, because we're talking about every single person. This is one of these singular antecedents, the ones we worked on with the pronouns where we choose his or her instead of they. We'll talk about this a little bit more later on. Now that we have our rules for making singular verbs, let's talk about when to use singular and plural verbs. Now th this probably is is definitely review, but just in case you're unsure of what plural means, plural means more than one. So these verbs, other verbs that we're going to use when there is more than one thing that we're talking about as our subject. So first of all, if you have a subject that's plural, we need a verb that's plural. This one's pretty obvious. So if we say the newspapers are old, notice our subject is newspapers. We have more than one newspaper because it has an S, it's a noun. Remember, nouns do have an S when they're plural. Verbs do not have an S. Our verb is R. This is a plural linking verb. Newspapers equals old. So this sentence agrees with each other. This is a good sentence. Second rule for when to use a plural verb. Use a plural verb when the subject is composed of two or more nouns or pronouns. And this is the key part, it's connected with and. So if I say my sister and I are going to the movies, notice how my subject, my sister and I, that's a plural subject because we have more than one and it's linked together by this keyword and. 
our verb also needs to be plural. Ours is a verb. It's actually helping going. And our is a plural form of is. So plural verbs, there's only two rules. Uh, singular verbs are a few more rules than two. So let's take a look at which is singular verbs. So singular, of course, we mean when the subject is one. So the first rule is going to be the opposite of the first rule of plural verbs. If the singular or the subject is singular, we need a singular verb. So if I say Allison sits alone, notice how Allison is a subject, is one person. So I need a singular verb sits. Notice how I was a rule because it has an S on the end of it. So it's a singular verb. Again, with these rules, most of them just come naturally. They just sound right. We would not, most people would not say Allison sit alone. It just doesn't sound right. So that, that kind of makes this a little simpler. Second rule. Now this rule, number two, this looks similar to rule number two for plural verbs. The rule is when two or more nouns or pronouns are connected, but this time notice how we're using or or nor. So we're not using and, we're using or or nor. So if I say, is your mom or dad home? Notice how we have mom or dad. We have that keyword or. And our verb, this is kind of a different sentence because our verb is actually coming at the beginning of a sentence and our verb is is. Let's just take a look at that sentence for a second. Notice how this sentence uh, changes if we put and. So if I say, is your mom or dad home, that works for or. If I put, are your mom and dad home, that works for and. So just that one word makes a difference. Rule number three, we're not going to talk about this too much in sixth grade, but rule number three, if you're talking about a sum of money or a period of time, this is always singular. So if I say $8 is a lot of money, notice how we have our money, we need a singular verb is. Or if I say four hours, that's time, we need a singular verb. Next thing we're going to talk about is rule of four, collective nouns that describe a group. So these nouns, when you really look at the, the actual nouns, uh, if you look at it, it, it sounds like more than one, like family. You know, there's more than one person in a family, team, club. But when we talk about these, it's just one group. So family, just like one family, team, just like one team. So if you use a, a collective noun like this, we need to have a singular verb. So if I say something like, this class is the best, those are a collective noun. Class, we use is singular verb. Also notice that, again, this is one of these rules where it just sounds correct. We wouldn't say this class are the best. It just doesn't sound right. Last but not least, it takes us to our singular antecedents. As we said before, these antecedents are the ones that we talked about with pronouns. Uh, the antecedents on this table, where these are just singular antecedents, uh, same as the pronouns. And if you see one of these in a sentence, we need a singular verb. Nobody eats the cake. Notice how we have singular antecedent. Nobody, I'm sure right here, we need a singular noun with an S. So now that we know this, our next step is to take a look at our assignment. So for this assignment, you're going to go to Google Classroom, of course. Click on first hour or whatever English class you have. Then you're going to click on open. And notice how there's an attachment here. You're going to open this attachment. And when you open this attachment, you're going to notice there are directions here. These are the directions we're working on right here. First thing I'd like you to do is, I had a typo here, instead of finding six verbs that do not agree with each other, find four. Now this is four after the one that we fix. So we're going to fix one, and then you're going to find four more. So technically all together, you're going to have five with the one that we fix right now. All right, so first thing we're going to do, let's work on number one right here. We're going to look up paragraphs four, five, six, and seven, and we're going to find four verbs that do not agree with their subjects. So that's four total. So let's start with paragraph four. I'm going to read through it. After reading through it, notice how at the bottom here, let's take a look at this sentence right here. The first 50 copies flew out the door so fast that three more editions was released within a year. The trick here is you're really focusing on your subjects and your verbs. So notice how we have a subject of 50,000 copies. This is a lot of copies. This is definitely plural. This is a plural subject, so I'm just going to put a note in here, plural subject. 
and you don't have to put notes in. I'm just doing this so we, we know for the purpose of this video. Since it's the plural subject, looking for my verb, looking for a word that shows action. Uh, well, release shows action. Notice how we have a word next door that's helping it, was. Was is not a plural verb, it's a singular verb. So this is where you'd want to refer to the first part of the movie or take a look at your interactive notebook, that chart with the linking verbs, the singular and plural linking verbs. We need to have a plural linking verb. So we're going to change was to were. So you're going to erase was, change it to were, and then we're going to highlight it purple because that's what the direction says. You're going to do this for four other verbs. Paragraphs four, five, six, and seven. After you finish that, you're going to focus on paragraph one for a couple things. First thing I need you to do in paragraph one is you're going to look for a helping verb, highlight it yellow. Now, there's more than one helping verb in this paragraph. Just find one. That's all I need. You're going to highlight it yellow. After you've done that, you're going to find a verb in paragraph one again that does not or is not in past tense. So this whole paper is written in past tense, but there's one verb in paragraph one that's not in past tense. You're going to find that, and then you're going to change it so it is in past tense, and then you're going to highlight it green.